Today I'm going to show you how to do batik. Um, somebody came into the shop on Monday and said there was a notice outside. It said there was a batik demonstration on Wednesday and the lady came in and said, can you tell me what batik is? So I'm going to start by showing you what batik is. This is a butterfly that uh, has been done using the batik technique and in fact I first re-engaged with batik, I'd done it a long time ago, at a children's batik workshop where children were making butterflies and the way that they were doing this, and these are mostly children's works, some of it's mine, we actually got a cardboard frame, photocopy of the butterfly with quite clear black lines and we stretched some fabric over this and they use that as a guide as to where to drip the wax and you'll see shortly just exactly how we drip the wax. So I got my own wax warmer and did a few of my own pieces which I've now lost. Here we are. Because what I want to do is landscapes, local landscapes out of Batik and that is, it's not finished but it's the view across the river from the house where I live so you can see the hills and the tree and hopefully the water. So that's what I'm aspiring to but at the moment I'm doing some practice pieces because I want to get better at doing the technique. So what I'm aiming to do today is just some small squares like this um, that I've been using, it's sort of like doing a sampler if you sew it, uh, to make into greetings cards. So here are a couple of cards that I've made out of batik. So you can see the sort of design you can get. The colour is added later, so we will be getting onto that and the card actually is just a pre-bought card. So basically I stick the batik there, fold it back, fold it again and we have a card, a greetings card. So I've got quite a few little pieces that I've done. I just cut the fabric up and make it into pieces and there's one here where I have not yet ironed the wax out so you can see I thought I'd do some greetings cards with the first letter of somebody's name on. So adding the ink, what happens is the ink doesn't go where the wax went and it leaves a white mark. And what I then have to do is to iron the, the wax out of the fabric and I just do that with an ordinary domestic iron and some newspaper. And you can get some quite interesting little squiggles. Some of them don't work out so well as others. I was trying there to do dragonflies because I thought they might look quite attractive. And as I say, I'm just trying to develop the techniques on this piece of fabric I was playing with the idea of flowers and then I did a couple of larger ones and I like the bright colours as you can see. Sometimes when I'm doing a larger piece I stretch the fabric and actually this is a weaving loom that I find quite useful for stretching the fabric over. And the fabric doesn't cost much because I seem to have mislaid my fabric. This is just a sheet, an ordinary sheet torn up. And you can see it's not actually a white sheet, it was a cream sheet. But I don't think that matters a great deal. So I've got newspaper on the table because this is potentially messy, both with the wax and with the, the 
fabric dies. Thanks. Um, I'm also wearing my old clothes <coughs> because the inks and the wax can wreak havoc really. Um, and here is my wax warmer. Now I could have bought a very expensive wax warmer on the internet for about a hundred pounds but um, I think I must have been on Amazon and it tells you people who bought this also looked at that and as I was about to buy this expensive wax warmer I saw that some people use an ordinary waxing machine that they use to wax parts of them that they don't wish to be there can't think of a better way to put that <laughs> So um, I've had the wax melting for a while. It comes, you can either buy candles actually, or it comes as little wax granules, which you just pop in. But actually we've got enough in at the moment, so I shan't be putting a lot in. So that's been warming while I've been setting up and talking to you and this is called a shanting I think it's a little Japanese thing can you see the shape of it it's like a little cup and you can see that wax is dripping out at this end perhaps it's like a teapot really and that wax dripping out is what I'm going to use effectively to draw with what I have to guard against is touching the fabric with this bowl part of it, the pot if you like of the teapot um, because that will make a bit of a splodge. So I get some warm wax in here, get the excess off and I just draw, it's doing dots at the moment, let's just look at the dots, do a little cluster of dots and let's do some little squiggles. And swirls geometric shapes now you can see for instance here I dropped a bit but that doesn't matter because that's part of the fun really of batik you're dealing with the unexpected and you're working quite quickly. We're dripping a lot. Some hair. Hmm. Not sure about that at all. So I need more artistic ability to attempt people. One more person. Right, I think that's enough for the moment. Let it dry off a little and then I'm going to add the inks. <coughs> 